everyone travels, whether it's to work, school, sports practice, the gym, the store, the park, or anywhere else you need to go. Everyone travels. The question is, how? Chances are, if you're from the United States, your transportation system looks a lot like this. You most likely drive a significant amount in your daily life to get to all the places you need to go. But do we always need to drive? According to the Federal Highway Administration's National Household Survey, 28% of trips are one mile or fewer, yet 60% of those trips are driven, and 50% of all trips are three miles or fewer, yet 72% of those trips are driven. Many of these trips are within walking or biking distance. Though there is no across-the-board technical definition of walking or biking distance, urban planners, transit companies, and engineering firms tend to define walking distance as around one quarter of a mile, which is an average walk of five to 10 minutes. They define biking distance as two miles, which is about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your pace. These two methods are the most common forms of active transportation. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention defines active transportation as any self-propelled, human-powered mode of transportation, such as walking or bicycling. This can also include skateboarding, rollerblading, and several other types of non-motorized transportation. The two benefits of active transportation that I will focus on are improving human health and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Other benefits include economic benefits through improved access to services and jobs and increased traffic in commercial areas, improving mobility of vulnerable groups that tend to have lower mobility, such as children, the elderly, people with disabilities, and lower income people, and increased choice for residents who will no longer be solely dependent on a car for all or most trips. Scientific studies conclude that working physical activity into our busy lives can have a number of health benefits, such as reducing the risk and impact of cardiovascular disease and diabetes, reducing the risk of some cancers and premature death, improving mood, and helping to control weight. Physical inactivity causes 1.9 million deaths each year and ranks second only to tobacco as a behavioral risk that contributes to disease. Worldwide, 60% of adults are insufficiently physically active, and 20 million children and 1.3 billion adults are overweight or obese. Reducing rates of obesity is a high priority because it is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and some cancers. Though these statistics seem dire, even moderate increases in physical activity, such as those induced from walking or biking for some of your trips to work, school, and errands, can reduce the rate of obesity. An Australian study found that a 5% increase in the number of people doing 30 minutes of moderate activity each day could save 600 lives and allow for significant savings in the healthcare system. Furthermore, a study in Scandinavia found that workers who biked to work had mortality rates that were 28% lower than their non-biking counterparts. Clearly, a moderate increase in physical activity can deliver excellent health benefits. These benefits only get better when that increase in physical activity can be worked into your daily schedule while traveling to things that you already do. Increasing active transportation has environmental benefits such as reducing greenhouse gas emissions from vehicles. For example, the United States could avert about 85 million metric tons of CO2 if 60% of new housing growth occurred in areas with easy and convenient access to active and public transportation. Along the same lines, moving from sprawl to compact development in the U.S. could reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 7 to 10% by 2050. Furthermore, the four communities that participated in the Federal Highway Administration's non-motorized transportation pilot program which aimed to improve access to local destinations via walking and biking, saved nearly 3.6 million gallons of gas over five years, which averted over 34,000 tons of CO2 emissions. These environmental benefits also improve human health because less air pollution leads to lower levels of aggravating and triggering respiratory illness. So, if you like the idea of active transportation, your next question is probably, how do we get there? 
There are two main methods to increase the use of active transportation in communities. The first is to improve infrastructure. This means improving, maintaining, and building new and safe sidewalks, adding ramps to sidewalks to make them more accessible to those with disabilities, creating safe bike lanes, adding bicycle parking at popular destinations, and much more. The second way to increase active transportation is educational and promotional programs. The educational programs can include teaching children and adults how to safely and properly ride bikes, teaching drivers how to best share the road, and many other types of programs. Promotional programs can include efforts such as safe routes to school that work to make sure children can safely walk and bike to their schools, ride your bike or walk to work or school days, and other programs that call attention to the safe places where residents and communities can walk and bike. If you think active transportation would be great for your community, talk to your neighbors, talk to your city council, see if there are any biking or walking advocacy groups or sustainability groups in your community, or start one. Active transportation is the most local form of transportation, and much of the change comes from citizens who learn about it and think this would be great in my community. Thank you.